Thank you everyone for joining us for the 2020 USGBC Leadership Awards. Before we get into today's closing plenary, I want to take a few minutes to recognize a lifetime leader from our USGBC family who recently passed away. Winner of USGBC's President Award at this very ceremony in 2013, Gerald Heinz was the founder and CEO of Heinz. To me, the closing quote of Gerald's obituary in the New York Times was both fitting to his incredible contributions over a lifetime in this field and aptly describes the future he now leaves in our hands. Innovation, it's a state of mind. I have never believed in the status quo. Let's take a look. I'm Gerald Hines, chairman of Hines. We are property developers and managers. I opened my office with a secretary in 1957. I was involved in engineering of buildings, mechanical systems. I started building warehouses until I had enough properties and cash flow to support my family. Of course, our first really large projects were One Shell Plaza and the Galleria. Those put us on the world map. From the beginning of the firm, the legacy of the company and the reputation of the company was critical to Jerry Hines. We decided early on that it was important for us to have the most efficient buildings possible. Jerry's an MEP engineer by background. He encouraged us to create the best standard we can establish in any given marketplace. We were gathering energy data 40 years ago before anybody used the word sustainability. We were gathering BTUs per square foot in a building and putting them on ledger sheets and sending them to Houston and they were being compiled. And property managers were being compared one Heinz property manager against another Heinz property manager. This is imprinted in the DNA of the firm. This is something we care about, but we also understand it's good for the business. We always thought the clients would appreciate low operating costs and better conditions for their employees. And tenants today, say, I won't be in anything except a gold building or platinum. Heinz has taken a leadership role in sustainability through its environmental policies, through its social policies with its investors and its tenants. Almost 900 of our tenants worldwide are in our Heinz Green Office program, which is a self-certification program that we use based on the U.S. Green Building Council's lead rating system to help tenants achieve green objectives. I think it's terrific that Jerry is winning this award. The U.S. Green Building Council, just like Jerry Hines, has tested our organization and there's been a lot of give and take. I would like to thank the council for this award on behalf of our 3,500 employees that helped achieve this. Thank you. A World War II veteran, a family man, an architectural and engineering pioneer, and a mentor Gerald has ensured that his thirst for transformative building commitment was always accompanied by his passionate belief in sustainability. It's clear that he has not only left a lasting impression on the people at Heinz, his influence on all of us, on our investments in one another, on the way we value this work, and on the complex, dynamic projects we bring to the world will be felt for generations. In fact, the leaders we honor here today hold closely his same ideals, his same strength of character, and his same dedication to leaving the world better than he found it. And we will get to that. But you know, the thing about Gerald Heinz is that he was a problem solver. And it's more than six decades in sustainable building. He spent far less time resting on his laurels, and there were many, than he did looking at the challenges in front of him and the work yet to be done. So in that spirit, that's what I'm going to do here first. I think we all know it's not ideal to do this virtually. With each missed event this year, I found myself saying, the next one, let's have the next one in person. But as the months have worn on, all of us have come to terms with the fact that FaceTime is going to mean something different for the foreseeable future. This year has revealed a lot about how the systems in our society, in many ways, have been designed to uphold the very inequitable circumstances we as a green building community, I've always fought to improve. But if this year has taught me anything, it is this. Action is critical, but it is also delicate. Here's what I mean. At the end of September, an incredible piece 
ran in the Los Angeles Times with the headline, The luxury air business is booming as many Californians struggle to breathe. It was quite literally a breathtaking headline. What followed was a story about real estate agents and developers figuring out how to market air quality. At first, the writer talked about a house in Pacific Heights, San Francisco, that held a tremendous lead score as far back as 2009. Inspired by the appeal of the house's air filtration system, a real estate agent began marketing air as a health and wellness amenity. The same way builders of yore pitched hot tubs or home gyms. More than a decade later, the marketing plan has proved prescient. As the Times writer said, a deadly pandemic is lingering in the air, keeping people cooped up at home or anxiously thinking about aerosols and airflow whenever they venture outdoors. Now, a great deal of the story was positive, but something the developer's wife said disturbed me. Truly, the greatest luxury in life is your health, she said. Take a moment to process that statement. Everything about it is antithetical to our responsibilities and values at USGBC and in this community. Building is a precious and profitable commodity, as it should be. And of course, amenities can be an alluring part of this work. But in the wealthiest country in the world, in a time where the vast gaps in environmental justice and standards of living are becoming more and more evident, I can say this, air is not an amenity, health is not a luxury. And what sets the vast majority of the people in the USGBC community apart from this disappointing reality, in fact, what sets every leader we are honoring here today apart from the sentiments in that article is not only a deep and inherent understanding of these basic human truths, but much, much more. The leaders we are honoring here today have a fundamental commitment to health and well-being. And they know that commitment rings hollow if it is not rooted in more equitable distribution. Of course, I could give you a laundry list of what our programs, offerings, and the leadership behind them are bringing to the table. But the reason we have chosen the people, projects, and organizations we have today is simple. Every single one of them has a profound sense of responsibility to the idea that green building is not about amenities. It's about access. It's about knowing that healthy air should be accessible, that healthy buildings should be accessible, that higher living standards, regardless of background or circumstance, should be accessible, and that creating that reality means a healthy economy is within our reach. Make no mistake, all of this is connected. And when outlining USGBC's new vision for our second generation earlier this year, we try to not only directly acknowledge this interconnectedness, but also to lay out a plan of action rooted in the knowledge that crises cannot be compartmentalized. We know that climate risks are tied to health risks. We know that racial injustice is tied to environmental injustice. And we know that resilience is not the result of reactions, but of planning, of careful consideration, and of leadership from our fellow human beings. But we also know that the type of air you breathe should not depend on the type of home you can afford. And the sheer act of having to be resilient and be resilient with the frequency required by today's compounding global crises is in direct contradiction with having a higher standard of living. The Leadership Awards remains one of my favorite events of the year because we get to celebrate leaders who are building a future where we don't have to choose between public health and economic prosperity, where we can expect a guaranteed standard of living instead of a perpetual disparity in our wealth and well-being. So let's jump in, shall we? Our first awardee has not held back in describing its ambitious approach to ESG, an Energy Star Partner of the Year Award for the Sustained Excellence in 2019 and the Neri Leader in the Light recipient for the 10th year in a row, Vornado Realty Trust has more than 30 million square feet of LEED certified space. And Vornado has not only committed to certifying their entire office portfolio, but is also focusing on the next frontier of sustainable real estate, 
programs that concentrate on technology, resilience, and health. And with a GRISP Green Star ranking in 2019 for the seventh year in a row, Vornado has adopted a Vision 2030 plan to make all of its buildings carbon neutral in the next decade. But what stands out for me is the steadfast Vornado value that we have seen on display from the company time and again. Progress in terms of people. Vornado has laid out the five sectors of individuals, of stakeholders in its success. Its board, its tenants, its investors, its employees, and its community. When you have an active relationship with property managers and regular phone calls with investors to address the progress of ESG, when sustainable practices become a mainstay focus on the board, when employee engagement with building management assesses carbon reduction goals, and when you consistently participate in community and government partnerships focused on civic and environmental issues, it's safe to say you are building a company where equal perspectives play a role. In short, Vornado is putting people first. One of Vornado's most notable properties, its Farley office building, which is now pursuing LEED version 4, is rooted in a relevant, timely, and human-centric value. Yep, you guessed it, access. Yes, Vornado discusses the building's amenities, but the company finds its most inherent value in the access it provides its tenants. Access to transit systems like Amtrak, the Long Island Railroad, the New Jersey Transit Regional Train Networks, and multiple New York City subway lines. Access to rooftop collaborative work and event spaces. Access for tenants to their real-time energy consumption, just to name a few. As a USGBC Gold member, Vornado has LEED certified all but 6% of its portfolio and has ensured an organization-wide vertically integrated commitment to ESG. Their human resources team, sustainability team, and executive team all report to a corporate ESG team who reports to a board with oversight of social and environmental factors, including but not limited to climate change and climate risks. Not only is Vornado creating a culture where everyone holds themselves accountable for implementing best sustainable practices, but they're also making that work life, and quite frankly, that quality of life, accessible to everyone in their network. As members of the green building community, and even more specifically, as USGBC members, we have a duty to make it easier to do the right thing. And I'm consistently impressed by Vornado's dedication to doing just that. It's my honor to present Vornado Realty Trust with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for ESG. As our next recipient has admitted, convention centers create considerable energy demands, produce large quantities of waste, strain water systems, and emit large amounts of greenhouse gases. But convention centers also fall into that category we have mentioned today, an obstacle with the potential for opportunity. Because of their incredible scope, today's convention centers are quite literally some of the biggest leaders in LEED certification. And they're also a wonderful symbol of the fact that LEED works for projects of all shapes and sizes. The TCF Center, Detroit's premier convention center and a 2.4 million square foot facility achieved LEED Gold certification in October 2019. At the time of certification, it was the largest LEED certified building in Michigan and the largest to certify to gold. It is also the largest and one of only three convention centers in the world to certify under LEED version 4.1 operations and maintenance. Working closely with USGBC and GBCI staff throughout the certification process, the TCF Center demonstrated continuous efforts to investigate and implement green initiatives throughout the facility. And most importantly, they brought others into that work. And in March of this year, the state of Michigan and the city of Detroit were able to tap into the TCF Center's long-standing support for the health and well-being of its employees and visitors. The facility's reputation for being a steward of human health and wellness made it the optimal venue for a temporary alternative care site for the COVID-19 crisis. In the early days of the pandemic, the exhibit hall was converted to provide medical care space for the overflow of local Detroit hospitals. 
The swift transition to serve was largely possible because of the TCF's existing commitment to being a leader in the community, to prioritizing the experience and quality of life for the people frequenting the space, and to rigorously subscribing to the standards and practices of both the EPA's Environmental Procurement Policy Program and LEED. This building's project leaders and venue employees have already made that connection between healthy people, healthy places, and a healthy economic outcome. They have strict guidance on anti-human tracking efforts. 70% of the facility's food is locally sourced, and the venue partners with organizations to minimize waste and provide items to Metro Detroit's underserved communities. And while we are in uncharted territory when it comes to the rules around group fitness, the TCF Center has historically been a hub for free exercise, networking, and opportunities to use fitness to give back to local nonprofits supporting the areas needy. And of course, since access is the word of the day, let's not forget that the Detroit People Mover, the city's fully automated light rail system, and the cornerstone of sustainable transportation in the city arrives directly on the fourth level at the TCF Center. Bike share services are available. Electric car charging options are on tap. Rooftop and underground parking contribute to heat island reduction and a notable lead credit. I could go on and on. The bottom line is that this building is about bringing people together and about doing that in the most sustainable and inclusive way possible. It is an honor and privilege to present the TCF Center with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for Building Performance. Our next recipient has committed to powering its campus entirely through renewable energy and committing to a carbon neutrality by 2050. With 21 LEED certifications, one well project, and more projects in the pipeline, Vanderbilt University's building portfolio is as broad and impressive as some cities. Three of the school's residence houses are LEED Gold. Two have silver certification and two more, Crawford and Sutherland houses, were the first LEED certified buildings at any college or university in Tennessee. In 2013, Vanderbilt's Vantage Lab, a genomics core laboratory occupying almost 16,000 square feet, became the institution's 14th certified project. And just last year, I visited the campus to present the engineering and science building and Eskin Biomedical Library with LEED Gold certification. Presenting the plaque at the library for me was twice as rewarding. There is something phenomenally gratifying about certifying a building where research and work in the healthcare field is being done. Call me crazy, but if a medical student is digging in on research about pulmonary embolisms, I would like to make sure they have the best possible air quality in which to think about the gravity of that task. So it only makes sense to honor an academic institution like Vanderbilt when they clearly agree with that sentiment and with the fact that it's incumbent upon all of us to ensure the health and well-being of the people who make it their life's work to preserve our health and well-being. Over the last several years, I've been fortunate enough to witness Vanderbilt's commitment to lead and to creating a sustainable future VU, as they have aptly named it. And this year, the school launched the Future VU Sustainability Leaders Program to use community engagement and peer mentoring to foster a sustainable campus culture. In addition, the initiative is designed to improve sustainability literacy, improve interaction with sustainability programs such as net zero energy and zero waste, and encourage and enable positive behavior change with all BU communities. With a sustainability advisory council established to guide the university's long-term sustainability strategies and to hold the school accountable on not only the carbon neutral pledge and the promise to achieve zero waste on campus by 2030, I can't wait to see what they do next. I'm incredibly proud of the work Vanderbilt University has done, and it is my distinct honor to present the school with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for its building portfolio transformation. Our fourth honoree is a true silver and zero waste certified project that comes to us from the Santa Yanis Valley 
where it holds the title of the sixth largest Native American gaming operation in a competitive California marketplace. The Shumash Casino Resort entertains more than 3.5 million visitors per year and employs near 2,000 people, making it the largest private employer in Santa Barbara County. A commitment to this is extraordinarily significant for Native American ownership and the community as a whole. Since 2004, the Shumash's total waste stream has gone from 7.2 million pounds per year to 3.2 million pounds per year in 2018. Recycling has risen from 6% to 90% in those 14 years of recycling operations. A distinguished member of the EPA Food Recovery Program, Shumash Casino, also says employee education has been pivotal to the success of their zero waste program. Its large financial investment in training and new zero waste infrastructure has paid off for their bottom line and driven significant improvements in their community. And through true certification, they have demonstrated their ability to create forward thinking programs such as closing the loop on styrofoam cups and producing carpet cushion products made from the casino's post-consumer carpet material. This casino is being recognized for its leadership and outstanding achievement, but it's also being celebrated for its innovative and compassionate approach to bringing people together. With True, the Shumash have optimized used uniforms to clothe the poor in developing countries or processed locally for shop racks. And with Veggie First, a local food bank the casino has partnered with, they are donating food to feed seniors and bringing greater communal awareness to the elders needs. To me, this is a poignant reminder of Mahatma Gandhi's famous quote. The true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. This has never been truer than today. And the Shumash understand that better than anyone. They know that our collective health is directly tied to whether or not we consider the health and well-being not just of the person next to us, but also of those generational bookends at the beginning and ends of their lives. The young and the old who sometimes get overlooked as the past and future representations of us, but who are never properly accounted for in their current needs. There is so much heart in this company's leadership, the kind that, if observed and replicated by others, could lead to transformational change across our field. It is my privilege to recognize that excellence by presenting the Shumash Casino Resort with the 2020 UAGBC Leadership Award for its commitment to true and zero waste. Our fifth recipient describes herself as an innovative professional specializing in sustainability, biofuels, environmental management systems, and regulatory compliance issues. More than that, what stands out for me is Kenya's kind of work ethic. She's not afraid to go first. A 2010 Together Greenfellow and current executive director at the Kentucky Office of Energy Policy, Kenya Stamp helped make Kentucky the first state to leverage the U.S. Department of Energy state energy program funding to implement peer projects in her state. Kenya's efforts have led to peer certification of well-known facilities across the state, the electric plant board in the city of Glasgow the Nolan Rural Electric Cooperative Corporation, and the storied U.S. Army installation Fort Knox. Her work on these three projects helps serve reliable, resilient power to an estimated 60,000 plus people a day. And another timely project that Kenya helped facilitate in the early days of the COVID-19 crisis came to fruition in May of 2020. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir and Energy and Environment Cabinet Secretary Rebecca Goodman announced more than $600,000 in U.S. Department of Energy state energy program grants to support Kentucky education, reduce the energy burden in low-income communities, and improve energy security. At the heart of this announcement was Kenya's vision for applying SEP to power system reliability and resilience and leveraging the program to make a real difference in the state. The governor cited the significance of this by saying, Affordable electricity is a primary driver of our economy and essential for the well-being of everyone. Now, more than ever, in this time of the coronavirus pandemic, 
it is important to ensure continuing affordability and resilience of Kentucky's energy resources. Kenya is also currently managing Kentucky's Brownfield Environmental Leadership and Compliance Assistance programs. She has remained an advocate for leveraging the SAP program to bring reliable, resilient power to America's cities, including GBCI's efforts to replicate the peer program for additional state energy offices. Kenya calls herself an energy nerd. I hear you, Kenya, and perhaps we are kindred spirits. I too am a nerd for data. But in all sincerity, it's a true pleasure to present this award to a woman whose leadership embodies the powerful values of USGBC and GBCI, a commitment to educating others on the intersection of energy and health, and the impact of energy efficiency on creating a better quality of life. It is my pleasure to present Kenya Stump with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for your commitment to peer and sustainable energy systems. Our next awardee has truly come full circle. From UGBC student volunteer at the University of Central Florida, to being a part of our Emerging Professionals program, to serving as the City of Orlando's Director of Sustainability and Resiliency, Chris Castro has long championed our organization and is on the ground creating a healthier future in Florida. Chris has held sustainability and energy related positions with the US Department of Energy. He has been awarded a delegate for the National Wildlife Federation and the Clinton Global Initiative, selected as a global shaper by the World Economic Forum, and is the co-founder and chairman of Florida Green Chamber of Commerce, the first statewide business chamber aimed at creating sustainable business practices. Chris was also involved in the citywide sustainability efforts that led to Orlando's 2020 Lead for Cities Gold Certification a recognition also made possible by a generous grant from Bank of America. He has also been at the forefront of the city's efforts to decrease carbon emissions by expanding renewable energy and electric vehicles, implementing green building policies, championing infrastructure projects that prioritize bicyclists and pedestrians, distributing over 9,000 free trees to residents for their homes, and increasing opportunities for urban farming, community gardens, and greater access to local food. There is that word of ours again, access. When it comes to upholding the pillars of our organization and to creating a future with healthy people, places, and economies, access is the whole ball game. And Chris knows that better than most. Thanks to his efforts, Orlando is working on a resilient and equitable smart cities plan New initiatives such as free composting, fleet forming, and incentivizing renting electric vehicles to millions of visitors and accelerating adoption of EVs. What Chris's work has shown us is that LEED inspires leadership. Through Orlando's LEED Gold certification process, I have personally witnessed the profound collaborative spirit and profound personal and emotional investments that are made in the name of creating a city-wide higher standard of living. To see someone who started as a USGBC volunteer making tangible differences in his community is moving to say the least. The work ahead of us is unfathomable in scope. But Chris's wholehearted belief in the USGBC's worth in the world and the city's robust commitment to healthier building standards in a time when it is needed most gives me hope. Today, we are honoring Chris Castro and the city of Orlando, not only because they are living up to the standards of LEED, but because, just as importantly, they are living up to the ultimate expectation of their neighbors that all of us, regardless of background or circumstance, should have the chance to create the healthiest, safest lives possible. I am beyond thrilled to present Chris Castro and the city of Orlando with the 2020 UAGBC Leadership Award for your commitment to lead for cities. Can you think of a better time to sing for the unsung heroes in our green building family? I can't. 
Our next honoree is a man with over two decades of experience in overseeing all aspects of financing, development, construction, and operation of affordable housing projects, subdivision home building, commercial real estate development, agricultural land trusts, historic renovations, and military base reuse. A licensed general contractor and a lead AP Homes credential holder, Jeff Morgan is the president and CEO of First Community Housing, a nonprofit organization dedicated to developing affordable housing in San Jose and the Greater Bay Area and previous lead Homes Award winner for Outstanding Developer. This is not just any housing nonprofit. Its entire mission is rooted in including the people our society leaves behind. A UHGBC organizational member for 18 years, FCH has developed projects that incorporate increasingly healthy, sustainable features, all in an effort to serve low-income populations, including individuals, families, senior citizens, and those with special needs like chronic and mental illness and developmental disabilities. After receiving its first LEED Gold certification in 2007, FCH now develops lead platinum and gold projects in a region with some of the highest inequality in the country. Since its inception in 1986, FCH has developed housing for over 1,400 households with another 800 units in the pipeline. Today, Jeb oversees all operations, serving over 3,000 residents and ensuring that energy saving, sustainable green building features create a healthy living environment save money for tenants through low energy bills and minimize the impact of FCH's developments on the natural environment. Because FCH is able to provide tenants with free annual transit passes for transportation on all light rail and buses throughout the county, they save those individuals an average of $700 per year. It's no secret why we are honoring Jeff here today. It says it right there in the big, bold print on the First Community Housing website. We care about the quality and durability of our buildings and the health of our residents. Right there, the health of our residents. His work has always been about that, about a person's mental health, about their physical health, about their financial health. If anyone understands the profound connectivity between healthy people in healthy places equaling a healthy economy, it is Jeff for his commitment to putting a healthier, more accessible, affordable life within reach for so many in his community. It is my honor to present Jeff Morgan with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for Living Standard. Up next is a recipient who has proved a unique and invaluable member here at USGBC. Kim Shin, Principal and Senior Sustainability Wizard at TLC Engineering Solutions, is a renowned leader in our green building community. A lead fellow, Kim helped create the Green Guide for Healthcare and Lead for Healthcare Rating System. Kim is a Certified Commissioning Authority, an ASHRAE Certified Building Modeling Professional. He currently serves on ASHRAE's Standard Project Committee and has been actively involved in the design or commissioning of over 200 LEED certified projects. Having served on the National UHGBC Board of Directors from 2007 to 2009, today Kim chairs the UHGBC Tennessee Chapters Advocacy and Public Policy Committee and he also serves on the Nashville Mayor's Sustainability Advisory Committee. He has used his platform to promote LEED and to advance conversations about improving construction practices, standards, and policies. In fact, it's his own words that adequately describe why we are honoring him today. Kim proudly writes, I practice engineering because the results of my work can improve and protect the health, safety, and welfare of human beings. In short, it's not my career, it's my cause. He truly gets it. I couldn't have said it better myself. Our UHGBC Living Standard Leadership Award was ultimately created to recognize the individual efforts of people like Kim, people who get up every day and think of ways to make the experience of moving through this world less difficult and more fulfilling, less toxic and more restorative, and less harmful and more healthy. 
It is an honor and pleasure to present Kim Shin with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for Living Standard. Now, I hope you will indulge me for a moment because this one is especially personal for me. Moving important events has become expected at this point, but it's no less upsetting. And that's because much of what has happened over the past year seems to come with a more ominous and unspoken request. If you have lost someone, kindly postpone your grief. I'm sure everyone watching today has either lost someone to the virus or amidst this virus. And either way, your ability to mourn the people who have mattered most to you and mattered in a way that perhaps no one else could explain has been taken away. The rituals, the traditions, the way we would have comforted each other in the morning, all of that has been locked away for a later day. When someone dies, you don't want to mark your calendar for a year later or a TBD for when you can hug someone who understands your sorrow. You want to move through it, feel it, and most importantly, deal with it in your own time. When my longtime friend and collaborator and one of USGBC's fiercest advocates, Kate Hurst, passed away in January of 2019, I had that time. I had that space. And this year, over these last several months, I've had a different kind of space, thinking about loss, delay, and pain. And in that space, I also found myself thinking, what would Kate do? In the lead up to this year's Greenbelt, it has been easy to imagine what she would have done. Because she loved this conference more than anyone I have encountered. She had her hand in every detail, in every logistic, in every plan, and she did it all seamlessly. The ship just ran so smoothly, so flawlessly, that the gaping hole I felt was not right after she passed, but instead in the months that followed. When I had the instinct to pick up the phone and ask her a question or look to her for guidance or tell her my idea about a speaker or a panel or a session that I thought would really make a difference in people's lives, it was then I knew how granular and extraordinary her contributions had been. I miss my friend. And I miss what it felt like in the months, weeks, and days leading up to this conference in any other year but this one and last. And I hate that I could only really describe Kate's sense of joy for this work after she was not around to hear me do so. Last year, we awarded this honor to my dear friend Judith Webb. And every year, the Kate Erst Leadership Award will be given to someone who embodies Kate's combination of optimism and pragmatism, her strong commitment to sustainability, her selflessness, her humility, and her being driven by a sincere desire to make sure that what we do here results in people living longer, healthier lives. Through the years, Gail has been involved in numerous lead USGBC and GBCA projects an inaugural lead fellow, a past USGBC board member, and USGBC and GBCI board chair. Gail co-authored the book, Sustainable Healthcare Architecture, and spearheaded a number of design projects in Texas that highlight what happens when you successfully couple healthy people, healthy places, and a healthy economy. In 1989, Gail proposed what would become the framework for the city of Austin's green building program. And keep in mind, this was the first green building program in the world. And for those that don't know, Austin's green builder program had an incredible impact, not just on the creation of USGBC, but the launch of LEED and other building policies here and abroad. And most recently, Gail envisioned the Austin Central Library the first LEED Platinum Certified project in Austin's portfolio as the front porch of the city and a civic hub where people could better connect with others in their community. For the Mueller development, one of the world's largest LEED for neighborhood development projects, Gale, the Catalyst Development Group, and the city of Austin 
redeveloped the Robert Mueller Municipal Airport into a mixed-use urban village that sustainably supports a 700-acre community on its way to becoming home to more than 14,000 people, 14,500 employees, 10,500 construction jobs, and more than 6,200 homes. When reviewing the long list of Gale's achievements, you can find one singular common denominator, health. When I think about the intersection of healthy buildings and healthy beings, Without fail, I think of Gail, a founding chair of the Lead for Healthcare Committee and creator of the Green Guide for Healthcare. Gail's work has always been rooted in helping others see the connection between the buildings we live in and the bodies we inhabit. The LEAD Gold Certified Dell Seton Medical Center, the SITES Gold Certified Dell Medical District, and the Pierre Platinum Certified University of Texas Austin campus are all first-rate examples of Gale's behind-the-scenes brilliance and directives in the field of healthy building. Del Seton Medical Center's Health Learning Building achieved lead gold for new construction and has achieved 44% energy savings. Its Health Discovery Building also achieved lead gold for new construction certification and provides state-of-the-art multidisciplinary clinical research space. Its Health Transformation Building achieved lead goal for Core and Shell. And Gail and her team focused on reducing water and energy consumption, as well as the use of high-quality materials and improving indoor air quality. And finally, Del Seton Medical Center achieved lead goal for healthcare and a four-star AEGB rating. The Dell Medical School and its teaching hospital, Del Seton Medical Center, are part of the 16.2 acre Dell Medical District, a development located in central Austin on the University of Texas campus. And in large part because of Gale and the project team, in 2014, the University of Texas at Austin also became the first peer certified campus in the world. In other words, Gale's work across the board is always guided by an innate understanding that healthy people and healthy spaces cannot exist without one another. So much of our work has been about making sure that people from all walks of life, whether sick or in good health, whether in need of affordable housing or a sense of community, experience the higher standard of living we all deserve. Everything about Gail is genuine. Everything is punctuated by our incredible passion for building a better world than the ones we have inherited. For these, and for so many reasons, she reminds us of Kate, of Kate's work ethic, of her modesty, and of her devotion to this organization's vision of a more equitable world. And for that, it is my distinct honor to present this year's Kate Hurst Leadership Award to my dear friend and colleague, Gail Vittori. Our next recipient is a longtime USGBC member with 15 LEED certifications under its belt. Autodesk is not just leading in 3D design and engineering and entertainment software, but the company also includes the Autodesk Foundation and is at the helm of innovative solutions to the world's most pressing social and environmental challenges. From its lead platinum silver oak winery in Napa, California, to the lead platinum Dubai Museum of the Future, to registered lead gold San Francisco International Airport, Autodesk powers its buildings, data centers, and cloud services with 100% renewable energy. It has reduced its GSG emissions by 43% since 2009, and beginning in fiscal year 2021, Autodesk has set a new target for making its entire business climate neutral. The United Nations High Commission on Refugees used Autodesk 3D software to design a refugee settlement city of 600,000 people in Bangladesh. This resulted in literally life-saving designs for the Rohingya Muslims fleeing persecution in Myanmar. If I were to go through all of the Autodesk Foundation's grants and investments, the community building, the impact on the organization's employees, its COVID-19 assistance, and its disaster relief work, we could be here for days. But the ones I want to focus on are specifically the people and programs Autodesk supports in the name of a healthier future. Products and services that low-income consumers can afford 
are often inadequate, inappropriate, or simply unavailable. With the Autodesk Foundation's support, Catapult Design helps organizations develop, prototype, and commercialize solutions that meet the cultural, social, and financial needs of underserved communities. Off-grid communities lack the infrastructure for wired appliances like kitchen equipment, fans, electric razors, or even reliable lighting. With backing from Autodesk, Amped Innovation Solar Power Generators and Electronics are affordable for people earning less than $4 per day, yet powerful enough to support the demands of a small business. And in off-grid homes, open fires for cooking and light create health problems and don't meet household energy needs. But because of the support from the Autodesk Foundation, BioLite's high-efficiency cookstoves reduce smoke and generate energy from their exhaust fan. BioLite also designs solar lamps that work for up to 24 hours per charge. Notice a trend here. Autodesk is, like its co-recipients, is committed to access. Companies like Autodesk and foundations like the one at its core give me tremendous hope in the idea that effective, meaningful corporate social responsibility is still possible and will still play a critical role in forging a healthy path forward. It is an honor to present Autodesk, this multifaceted company that never ceases to amaze me with the 2020 USGBC Leadership Award for Market Transformation. It has always been our custom to begin this celebration by congratulating our newest class of lead fellows. But this year, with the stakes so high, with the future dotted with so many new challenges that we need to manage, I thought it best to end the event by recognizing the faces of our second generation. These are our ambassadors, our varied perspectives, and our distinguished collaborators who will apply their knowledge and experience to create a future where healthy people in healthy places will equal a healthy economy. The LEAD Fellow Program was established in 2011 to recognize outstanding LEAD APs who have demonstrated exceptional impact with LEAD related to technical knowledge and skill, significant contributions in teaching, mentoring, or research, and a history of exemplary leadership and of highly impactful commitment, service, and advocacy for LEAD. Fellows are nominated by their peers and must have made at least 10 years worth of exceptional impact on LEAD and hold an active LEAD AP with speciality credential among other requirements. To put it more succinctly, a LEAD Fellow is the most prestigious designation awarded by GBCI. I want to offer my sincerest gratitude to Kim Shin and Deepa Satyaram, co-chairs of the LEAD Fellow Evaluation Committee for guiding the LEAD Fellows review and selection process. And now, it is my distinct honor to recognize this class of 20 extraordinary individuals joining a select group of only 330 who have earned the right to call themselves LEAD Fellows and will take the world from a passing awareness of LEAD to a wholehearted adoption of its humane and urgent mission. Congratulations to every one of our 2020 LEAD Fellows. We are lucky to have you.
Before we go, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank our new class of lead fellows and today's honorees for their lasting contributions to this work. And I want to circle back to what I mentioned earlier, that all of this is connected. The leaders we have honored here today have a unique ability to look at the big picture and to create a world where we do more to connect the dots, where we do more to lead by example, where we do more to ensure access, where we prioritize sustainability, health and wellness, resilience, and equity, where human life is not compromised but championed as the focus of why we built in the first place, and a world where the connection between healthy people, healthy places, and a healthy economy is highlighted by a willingness to tackle multiple challenges and injustices at once and with a conscience. I wish we could have all been together for this, but I hope this small virtual ceremony is in some small way a tribute to how grateful we are for your membership, your friendship, and most importantly, your continued leadership in our changing world. Thank you all. And thank you for attending this year's Green Build Virtual. Your health and safety is always our top priority. While our goal is to get back to in-person gatherings as soon as it is safe to do so, our team will be closely monitoring the situation over the coming months and will announce 2021 dates and venue when the time is right. In the meantime, as we say goodbye today, I wanted to let you know that Green Build will also continue to offer virtual content in the first quarter of next year. I hope you will take advantage of this and I look forward to the time when we can all gather together again. Thank you.